been amongst the development program. There you see it, South Africans just saying welcome back to Bookland. And there's the little mascot, transfer. Wally, Wally Walters, the manager of the Transvaal team, has been for a number of years and well over a hundred games for Transvaal, he has been the manager. Looks after the players with kid gloves. They're just uh, realigning that poster is Francois Pinard. Young man who's had a few injury problems in his career, but playing fantastic rugby this season. Bali Swart, loose hit, prop forward. That's Uli Schmidt, six tests to his name. Johan Malou, big Kurbus Visa. Hannes Stadum, who started with Eastern Province. Ian MacDonald, the Springbok. Dion Lotta, the veteran. Henny LaRue, Peter Hendricks. Then Bernard Ferry, Yapi Mulder, Chris Dirks. And finally, it's Johan Liu and Tia Pengelsbach. So the crowd like that as Francois Pinot was managed to burst through and tear the poster. That was what was intended. So great press uh, interest in this game as well. We're looking in front of us. The press bank is absolutely packed to capacity. Just seats on the far sides of the grounds, on the behind the uprights. A few seats available and right up in the far side. Remembering that this stadium, packed to capacity, holds 68,000 people. Francois Pinard, who's really done very well at the Springbok training camps as well. Of course, the Transvaal players didn't attend. And almost half the matches he's played, he's been the captain. Young man who's doing terrific work for the development of rugby in the Transvaal. And the referee from the Western Province, Mr. Fiatberger, his 153rd first class game today. Willie Smith takes the Transvaal. Nicely fed back to Rue. Well, those are the sort of pressures I think that Johan Rue is going to be placed under this afternoon by the Auckland Pack, and one fully expects some very high up and unders as well from Grant Fox on Theo van Rensburg, and one knows that Transvaal have been working quite hard on their defensive tactics from that situation. An opportunity here, Francois Pinard just trying to find space. Well, he's Schmidt, well, he's done that a few times before for Northern Transvaal. Perhaps the pressure a little bit more now in the early stages of this match. Charge down came from Grant Fox, who got onto Uli Schmidt very quickly. That's Hannes Stradom. He'll be operating at number four. Interesting to see Auckland calling a short line out at that first put in for them. Tallest man amongst the line out forwards is Richard Fromont. Rebinding too quick. Rebinding on the jumper. There from Mr. Friedberger, binding, not binding on the jumper too quickly. Fox, I'm sure the chance file again to get a lot of those today. Lotter is under it. And oh, it was so nearly a try for Brandon Jackson there, but the Auckland players just knocking it on. Wait, wait, wait. wait Jackson wait, wait. was the tall man used in the line out along with Michael Jones. It's going to be a battle royal amongst the front rankers. Dowd, Fitzpatrick and Brown for Auckland. Schwartz, Schmidt and LaRue for Transvaal. LaRue and Dowd operating on the side of the scrum. Pushing. You're pushing. Yes, pushing. See, Johan LaRue just checking with the referee, Mr. Fred Berger, because now the new laws say that you can kick the ball straight out despite the fact that it was a free kick. Interesting to see that Chris Dirks, the right wing, was given the responsibility of that kick instead of Tia van Rensburg. Still Auckland using less than seven men in the line-out. Tall men operate one behind the other. Still a little bit of misunderstanding with the throw. Francois Pino on the second occasion now is very quick to get it in. It's laid back by Kubis Visa Rue. It was almost an interception by Carter. 
First time for Transvaal back into Auckland territory. Quick one up to Stensness. Ronnie Clark was with him. Looks like Sean Fitzpatrick's just in a little bit of trouble. Waiting for the first men, Aiden men to come on. Well, that would be a blow for Auckland. It looks like he's just holding his hamstring there. Auckland, of course, arriving in South Africa last Tuesday. They flew down to Durban and then spent the week down at sea level and then only came up to the high felt yesterday afternoon. Well, not too much attention to Fitzpatrick, so he obviously feels that he's okay. Fox with the restart. Just making absolutely sure that his forwards are behind the ball. It's a lovely kickoff tap back by Fremont. Now Stenslis gets it out to Clark. And Rensburg's nicely positioned. Chance for him to counter attack. Howarth is over there. He does well to get that kick in. The pressure was right on him. LaRue. And that's not out. Twigamala operating on the right wing. Nice dummy by him. Kicks it into an open space. Beautifully taken. He's very difficult to pull down. Stays on his feet well. Pinar puts in the tackle. Nicely worked back. Fox just looking for some space there. And Uli Schmitz, the man across for Transvaal, does extremely well to get it back to Rue. Good cover by the hooker. Well, he's a great hero. Firstly, where he was with Northern Transvaal, now for Transvaal, playing in just his eighth game for Transvaal today, but played in well over 140 games for Northerns. The little chip through there, and Terry Wright with plenty of pace, but Uli Schmidt getting across, and uh, it just shows what a great all-round play he was. Some early good playmaking there by Twigger Mahler. When last have you seen such a, a big dummy being sold to a man on the outside? Robin Brook. It's he who goes very high, tap back by LaRue, difficult one for Johan Rue. Cleans up well. A lot of pressure coming from the forwards at the back of the line out. Well, we haven't seen any particularly clean line out ball so far. Kubis Visa at number two. That's much better for Auckland, but a difficult one for a new to Alicia. Transfer forwards go piling in. It comes back to Rue. Fitzpatrick tried to grab him over the top right. Schmidt is there. The referee indicating that the Auckland players did in fact go over the top. Another new law being operated today is that the players joining the rucks and malls have to do so from behind the offside line, which is the back foot of the man in the mall and the ruck. No longer you, that you can come in from behind the ball, so the players coming in on the sides have to be very careful. And Thier van Rensburg, the prolific point, point scorer for Transvaal from inside his own half at Pulse. Here we see the drive in there by Francois Pinard. And coming into picture there is Johan Rui. As he picks the ball up, we see the, the hand of Sean Fitzpatrick coming through there. And uh, not too much coming of that, but off camera, Sean, Sean Fitzpatrick, a little bit of a scuffle there with the Transvaal players. Obviously weren't happy with that situation. We didn't hit that well at all. Stensness. Hasn't found his touch. This is a chance for LaRue to counter-attack. He's got Pina on the inside. So is Hannah straight on there. Beautifully taken by Howard. So he'll be able to kick this directly into touch as well. From a mark, you can do it. And very well done.
deep to Pinar. Nicely tapped down to Stadon. Good tackle by the Carter that time. Rue, LaRue. And that didn't miss by much. And LaRue obviously a little disappointed. He's the man who's almost in the footsteps of Nas Boerta. Expected at the moment, I think, Gavin, to be the next Springbok fly half. Well, they've spoken a lot about other players, including Joel Stransky, who's shown a, a great rise to uh, his previous heights this the beginning of this season, but apparently faltered in the last few weeks. Henny LaRue probably, yes, the front runner at the moment. Up, of course, against the most prolific point scorer in Test history, Grant Fox. And the touch judge indicates that that kick was too far. Ball flying just a little bit further in this rarefied atmosphere. Good solid scrum, Lauter at the back. Saw that Drew was covered by Michael Jones. Michael Jones makes a good smother tackle on Lauter. Transvaal do well to get it back, now Schmidt, he's strong on his feet, the referee almost caught up in the thick of it, now LaRue with the first touch for it was Yapi Mulder, they get it to Peter Hendricks at the back, two big men opposite each other again, this is Van Rensburg, Mulder stayed on his feet well, good hands by Van Rensburg, Rue trying to get it away to Eli Schmidt, the crowd loved this, and doubling around was Chris Dirks, can he stay on the inside? Chris Dirks was very strong, he manages to get it inside, Still Transvaal keeping the ball alive. The referee's indicated a penalty to Auckland. Good cover defence by the New Zealanders. Well, the crowd certainly weren't happy with that, but the Transvaal is going over the top there. Some excellent work by Chris Dirks in keeping that ball available, but just not enough close-in support from the Transvaalers. Good to see them using the width of the field, You, I think they have great opportunities. They're a very skillful backline, the Transvaalers, and we saw certainly last season the total rugby that they played in moving the ball around the field. This is Fox, always meticulous with everything he does. Once again, safety first. I think just to build on that as well, Gavin, the Transvaal tactics will be to run it a little bit because they will feel that Auckland will suffer from the altitude in the last 20 minutes particularly. Dolly Swart at the front. He played over 60 games for Western Province, so he's an experienced front ranker. Interference again at the line out. Second time Transvaal would be, have been penal, penalised. So, what we call the field ears on the referee, so there's no problem with understanding his interpretations. So really see Grant Fox miss touch. Dowd, then Fromont, then Otto Brown, that's Francois Pinar. Again, it's short to the front. And the Auckland can't secure it. It was pulled down by McDonald. Now the big frame of Kubis Visa trying to loosen it up. Great tackle from the back. And it was a nice little charge by Kubis Visa. And it was Robin Brook who got back to make the tackle. On the transfer bench. Well, two Springboks right nearest the camera. Then Wally Walters, Rudolf Strauli, Stefanel behind him. Come on. Get back. Tell you they could take these with 14 reserves and pick a side that would just about hold these two teams. No. Get this. Get back. Get back. Got Jason Hewitt and Bernie McCarhill and Steve McDowell and Zinzan Brookhall internationals on the reserve bench for Auckland. Fox is going to pepper them. Stenslis blown up for offside. Ron Fox got a clever little question there. He said, how far was Stensis in front of me? And the referee was pretty clear on it. The same, the same question was posed there by Sean Fitzpatrick. So that's obviously a, a popular all-black toy. And that is to 
just inquire from the referee in that sort of situation. Well, that doesn't often happen. Certainly the matches that I've seen Grant Fox play, and it's not often that the players are in front of the kicker. And a very early decision taken there by referee Berger as well. So this a little bit closer than his last attempt, still just inside his own half. If he connects it properly, he will have the distance. Not a long run up, he's connected that very well, but just pushed it to the side of the upright. It was a much better strike than his first attempt. Grant Fox hitting that a lot softer. Gave his time for it's time to get in under the ball. That was a knock on. Knock on, scroll down. Knock on, Reed. Yes, uh, Steve McDowell concentrating hard. New to Alicia. Fox hasn't let his outside backs have a two off, and Terry Wright is up very quickly. Now, if Transvaal can't loosen it up, it'll be Transvaal's ball, but they do. And a nice little touch from Henny LaRue. Man who pulled his hamstring quite badly against Northern Transvaal, but has recovered well. Fourteen minutes gone in the game and still locked at 0-0. Again Auckland battling a little bit at the line out. Dowd goes down on it. You to Alicia. Pinar's offside, referee waiting for advantage. Penalty for line out. Well, offside, that sorry. was a pretty good punt by Grant Fox, and I'm sure you'll hope that he can get that a little bit further. He's almost up to the halfway line. Yes, and he wasn't under pressure in taking it either. But that's 25 metres, and he'll be able to kick uh, under normal circumstances a lot further than that. Remembering that he's used to kicking with a, a dampish or wet ball in New Zealand, but uh, he's at altitude here. One fully expects him to kick it a lot further than that. And of course, it'll be Auckland put in at the line out. Well, just a, in fact, a little bit better. Touch judge on this side, Mr. Luki Khos, a Northern Transvaal Curry Cup referee. Variation to the back of Pinar jumping Jones. Visa works it out to Rue. Now the chase comes from Henny LaRue. Howard, nicely taken by him. Good tackle by LaRue. Roni Clark is back for it. Very well stayed on his feet excellently. Strong man, thumping tackle by Hannah Stradom. Kubis Visa and somebody else having a bit of a go at each other, it was Sean Fitzpatrick. The Corbus Visa just pulled his arm back as if to give Sean Fitz Fitzpatrick a clout and then decided to discretion the better part of Valor. I think he also noticed referee Berger standing on his left hand side. Perhaps just a precautionary measure, but Fitzpatrick certainly in the action early in the match here yeah, and uh, we saw that little, perhaps a little twinge in his hamstring, but he seems to be okay now. Stradham got the highest, then Visa brought it down. He's been doing good work at the lineup. The skip to Yapi Molda. Bernard Ferry on the switch. This is Peter Hendricks, well held by Tuigamala. Pino and Jackson were two flank forwards in very quickly. Rue. Rue might have seen that there was an overlap on Transvaal there, but it's a nicely placed kick. Howarth. That's an enormous punt by Howarth, but the ball going out quite near him. 
Transvaal certainly enjoying a lot of the early exchanges here, and particularly in the lineouts, which is an area which was perhaps the most concerning for them. They've uh, certainly looked their part. There's a few early jumps there by Robin Brook for Auckland, and other than that, Auckland seemed to have struggled somewhat. Transvaal using the short lineout for the first time. Lot is a tall man. Rue got it away quickly. Good running by Henny LaRue. Again, it was Robin Brook who's very quick. Visa just had to juggle it on the first catch, which slowed his momentum. This is Dirks. He's in trouble. Well tackled by Clark, who's doing good work on defence. And that's lovely work by Dowd, who worked it free. Now a chance for Terry Wright. And now it's Terry Wright and Tier van Rensburg. Can Terry Wright get past van Rensburg? No good tackle on the light of man Wright. And good cover by Dion Lotter, the transfer number eight. Well, that was great work by Craig Dowd from the mall. And he it was who managed to loosen up the Auckland backs. Good tackle by Tier van Rensburg. Open up. Springbuck fullback incumbent. We'll just watch here how well Van Rensburg actually lines up right, making sure that he kept him close to the touchline so that he couldn't sidestep him and come on the inside and then perfectly executed tackle. Michael Jones and uh, Francois Pinar having a tough tussle at the back. Jones got the better of that exchange. New to Alicia trying to find an opening. He's well held up by the transfer forwards. Johan Rue, you see, just clapping there and saying, well done, forwards, you managed to bottle the ball up. Again, a position where Nuto Alicia might have used his backs. Bit of a problem on this side of the scrum with Johan Rue and Craig Dowd. Fitzpatrick didn't like it. Well, there's been a few problems on this near side during the course of the match. Let's watch Graham Dowd. He's not binding. You can see his left arm on the ground there. Referee actually blew up for him not scrumming in a, in a parallel fashion and scrumming inwards on in on the hooker. And uh, referee Berger in perfectly positioned. Schmidt with the feed. Great catch by Visa, two-handed, clean. Pina now goes in on the ball. Worked loose by Uli Schmidt, LaRue, Mulder. And it's uh, from Rensburg up in the back line. Very quickly across there is Brandon Jackson for Auckland. He's been covering a lot of ground. Fox from Rensburg back for it. And the bounce favoring Grant Fox. Well, that's a little disappointing for Transvaal because on the third occasion we've had a man actually breaking the advantage line, getting through, and then just not having enough close-in support to be able to that's hand that. the ball to the man on a platter as opposed to having to turn around and throw it back. Thanks, Transvaal just need to brush up a little bit on that, I think, and getting in closer. Jones couldn't secure. Transfer players coming around. Auckland really having a few problems at the line out at the moment. This is LaRue. Tuigamala. Calling for Howarth to come back. Needs to make a bit of an angle. And he didn't gain too much ground from that one. I think he was waiting for Shane Howarth to come back. But uh, deciding that he'll make the clearance himself. He was right up against the touchline. Pinar, Jones got the first touch. So it's a battle royal between Pinar and Jones. The signal from Mr. Fleckberger showed that the transfer players went over to get that ball, not staying on their feet.
Well, a very even contest so far, Gavin. No score on the board, and it's been about a 50-50 game. Well, to a certain extent, yes, but I think Transvaal certainly have had the opportunities which they haven't been able to, to, to turn into points, and their tactical kicking, I think, has been excellent, and so has uh, Grant Fox's. But perhaps more opportunities coming Transvaal's way and just not being able to capitalise on it, but some great defensive work, in particular Mark Carter and Brandon Jackson for Auckland. Rue gets an awkward one back to Henny LaRue. Michael Jones makes the tackle, picked up by Pinar. Tried to barge through the middle. Penalty, you saw that ball come out and then a hand came in and grabbed it. Stensness doesn't like. Michael Jones is there as well. Mark Carter. There's Johan Roo just waiting for the ball and very clearly the Auck Aucklanders going over the top there. A hand came through and uh, perhaps one thing they've got to be careful of is that they don't get themselves embroiled in, the, in arg too much arguing with a referee, which uh, certainly has been the case up until now and losing the concentration which they really need to keep to see this game through. So the two that he's had have been long ones and this is still long but the closest of the three. He's watching it closely. He didn't run back immediately. So again, just pushing it out to the right-hand side of the upright. Just not coming through the ball enough. It's a good kickoff by Fox. In quickly was Robin Brook. Grew got. This is a test for Terry Wright. Fox's double round behind him. Beautifully taken by Chris Dirks. The referee is right on the spot and Chris Dirks gets down. The transfer players go up in the air. The referee has signalled. It looks like a penalty to Auckland. Well, here's Chris Dirks going up with a big jump there. Just watch how well he catches it. Then he turns around. The big drive through. Now watch the transfer players from behind come flying over the top there. And that's what referee Friak Berger has blown against is the, the players going right over the top, jumping onto, onto that particular ruck. Well, the Auckland defenders also did extremely well in turning Chris Dirks. So he was unable to ground the ball. But he's uh, come back very slowly from that maul. The doctors quickly on to attend him. There you can see the red track suited medical men. Wally Walters is also there. It was a terrific take by Dirks, but the Auckland defence has, whenever they've been under real pressure, they've come up with the goods. Good tap back by Brook. Lovely pass from Lutu Alicia to Fox. But too far to Van Rensburg. Dirks. Well, that shows the advantage of a man like Chris Dirks, who's played many times at fullback for Transvaal. Playing in his 34th game today. But he's not looking too happy. Hollow Brown at the front. Rue did well to get that away to Henny LaRue. Now Bernard Ferri, Yapi Mulder trying to dash through but he's well held by the Auckland midfielders Rue picks up again but makes a bit of a hash of it and now Tuigamala is away with it and this is good play for Auckland from Rensburg gets back in desperate defence so does Henny LaRue that's Dirks doubling back great play by Tuigamala so strong on his feet Well, that's the second time we've seen the Auckland players come away with the ball from an, a resulting maul. Rue, new to Alicia offside. Well, so far we haven't seen Grant Fox with an opportunity at goal. It's 
a huge punt by Chris Dirks. Land in the other side of the Auckland 22 meter line, but out just about five meters inside the Auckland half. Well, there the offside position, which uh, if it hadn't been blown, would have put Transvaal under tremendous pressure there. But uh, Nuto Alessio just a little bit too quick in coming through there and hindering Johan Roo, the pass of the ball now. This is Henny LaRue trying to find space down the middle. It's a high tackle. The referee's hand is up for the penalty, just waiting for the advantage comes in the form of Van Rensburg on the outside. This is Peter Hendricks with his first real run. Can Transvaal make something of this? Swart just looking to open up. Uli Schmidt going wide. The run through again by LaRue. Just bridging that advantage line. Once again the drive there by Quibus Visser. And going blind on the short side. He has a chance. McDonald. Early pass was needed there. Uli Schmidt he has an opportunity. Uli Schmidt is going to score. Uli Schmidt going over there, perhaps just looking to try and work the man out of the way and get over under the poles, but first blood to Transvaal. Just look at the adulation on the face there of Uli Schmidt, but some good play there by the Transvaal forwards, and in particular Henny LaRue. Well, this was great play by Johan Roo, just deciding to go on the blind side. Van Rensburg, now watch how Peter Hendricks keeps the ball alive. He wasn't held in the tackle. Francois Pinot goes in very quickly. Now Uli Schmidt waits for the player to come on the dart. It was Henny LaRue. They opened it up again, taken on by the big man, Visa. Now they will work it down the short side again. Lovely play by Ian MacDonald as he got his hands over the tackle. Good thinking by Bali Swart, and what a dummy that was. Well, perhaps you can lose the ball in that situation. Lully Schmidt might have made a bit more sure of ground in that, but he's a competitive, aggressive player. Tia van Rensburg just taking a little longer with his preparation, and that is good. Well, Uli Schmidt scored against New South Wales and he's done it again here. Well, once again, indicative of the all-round effort. Uh, some lovely passing there. And Ian MacDonald did extremely well. Perhaps the Aucklanders could be... Uh, could, could have tackled inside there, the ball carrier themselves. Just look at the adulation there on Uli Schmidt's face. But uh, that's obviously part of their policy to out-tackle. And uh, a clear pass to the line for Uli Schmidt. Good catch by Hannah straight on the Auckland forwards were up very quickly. Now under the new laws, if Transvaal can't loosen this up, it would be there put in at the scrum. Oh, great catch by Howarth. A tester for Van Rensburg. He said, it's my ball. And makes the clean catch. It was a terrific catch by Shane Howarth. He just caught it in between his knees. Well, quite interesting that Thierf and Rensburg took a short kick there. I think he just one of his players saying to him, listen to your new laws, new laws, pal. So, Auckland assemble for the biggest problem they've had in this game and that's securing good clean line-out ball. Bali Swart, the man who was handling well as he gave the inside pass to Uli Schmidt. Now we're moving across the line, we're moving across. We're moving across the line. Brandon Jackson who was interfered with that time. And Grant Fox immediately up, I'm sure he's going to hoist it. This is a test for Van Rensburg, but a bit too far by Fox. Well, full credit, I think, there too, as Van Rensburg takes the quick one there, just looking to try and find space on the far side. That's Twigamala, not in the right position. But I think full credit to the Transvaal captain, Francois Pena, who put the necessary pressure on Grant Fox as he took that short kick. And ultimately, Fox kicked it a little deeper than he would have wanted to. That time it was Brook who tapped down, Fox an awkward ball, Stensness, lovely little grubber by him, the cover comes from Bali Swart, the loose head prop. Auckland managing to loosen it up, I'm sure they'll get this back. Yeah, well, that's why they didn't. The Interference by the Transvaal players. Uh, it's a penalty. 
You could see that again, Gavin. The ball was being loosened up, and then obviously Transvaal hands get in the way. Yes, I think they've also got to be careful because uh, Ferencberg can kick them over from this distance, but so can Grant Fox. And uh, one knows just how accurate a goal kicker he is. So important for Transvaal to limit their errors and uh, not get too carried away by the situation at hand. It was Bali Swat who, with the initial pickup, and down he went. Now, just keep an eye on that ball. Just look at the, the Transvaal is there. The ball was it seemingly going to be coming out there. There were some plenty of hands in the middle there. And... Uh, well, coming from the, the Auckland side, Riffery Berger obviously saw that the Transvaalers were hindering that ball coming out on the Auckland side. Well, I'm sure that sometimes Grant Fox won't attempt them in Auckland from this distance with the rain and the mud. But this field is in brilliant condition and it's a clear, clear day. I'm sure that Grant Fox would be put off if the crowd didn't actually shout out and count out as he steps back so meticulously great temperament and you saw there how many thousands of points he has been worth to his team well he had the length but as you saw the direction wasn't quite there Well, just five minutes to go in the half. Nicely taken in by the Auckland forwards. Robin Brook and Richard Fremont have been prominent from the kickoffs, both for and against them. right at the front of the line out that was good work good change of tactics by Auckland the skip from Fox to Igamala very strong he lost the ball in the tackle Dirks cleared up well this is Hendricks a good dubbing by Hendricks he realized that he was outside his 22 so he couldn't kick it he'd run back into his 22 LaRue waits and now Pinar gets it on the far side you see all the hoop jerseys of Auckland across in cover defense Rue Another dart by Henry LaRue, he nearly got away, but a great tackle by Michael Jones. McDonald trying to work it loose for Transvaal. Froman coming in to lend his weight now. In goes Carter and Jackson. Tuner Lishia gets it now, Twigger Mahler again, he's very strong, Peter Hendricks. Must be careful about going too high on a man of that size. Now Pinar, the feed on the inside and it's cover tackle again from Auckland. Now we see Henny LaRue, he's tried to breach the advantage line a number of times. Rue gets again. Bernard Ferry with the kick ahead. Now the chase will come from Chris Dirks. Terry Wright has got work to do here. And he just manages to shepherd it out. Well, an awkward moment for Terry right there, Gavin. A good play by the Transvaalers. Once again, not finding enough movement there and plenty of space at the back. And already we see a few Aucklanders walking around with their hands on their knees. And uh, there you can see two of them. One wonders if the altitude isn't already catching them before they get their second win. Good chase there by Chris Dirks. But most importantly, I think, you is, uh, is Henny LaRue's three or four attempts now to break through on the inside because that's really where you can create space. If you can get through there and you've got the support, you can wreak havoc in any opposition's camp. Well, it's nice to see a fly half who's prepared to run at the opposition. Visa at the front of the line out. It was Carter who went offside as it was coming back to Rue. So another opportunity for Tier van Rensburg with a penalty. He might have got his rhythm back when he kicked and was success successful with the penalty, with the conversion. The line-out was not clearly handled there, but cleanly handled by Corbus Visser. And then watch how it comes through. And there you see Carter, number seven, coming through there with his feet. Referee out of picture, already blown for it. And, well, Van Rensburg, this is very important for him that, uh, that he gets this over. The, the lead, just those seven points, that solitary try by Uli Schmidt, converted by Van Rensburg. Van Rensburg, Van Rensburg has missed two other penalties. Only three minutes of ordinary playing time in this first half. Yeah. 
Well, he took his time. He was very meticulous. And he seems to have got his rhythm. At the last couple of games in the Super 10 series, he kicked 14 out of 14. After having missed a couple early on in the game against North Harbour, he just went from strength to strength and has been a prolific point scorer in the last couple of seasons. Of course, made his provincial debut for Northern Transvaal when Nas Boerte was the kicker, so lived in Boerte's shadow for some years. Fox again giving Robin Brook time to get under the ball. It's taken on by Olo Brown, help from Dowd. New to Lucia, Fox. That's been his tactics for most of the game. This is also a bit too far from Rensburg. Did well to catch. Help from McDonald, who lost it forward in the tackle. This will be a good attacking position for Auckland. Well, saving grace there for Transvaal. Yeah, McDonald, who took the ball there from Rensburg, was not able to retain control of it. And he has a great opportunity here for, for Auckland to get some points on the board. And I said that that kick was too far, it was perfect by Fox, Michael Jones at the back, Luther Lucia has gone off, there he is, he gets quick hands to Fox, through the hands, he has a chance for Tuigamala, he is very difficult to stop in this situation and they don't stop him. Well you saw the heave and sigh of relief there by Steve McDowell, but you don't give that man that amount of room. A very timely try. Michael Jones with the pickup, who's been rather quiet in this first half. Now just watch how quickly the ball moves through the hands there of the backs. Shane Howarth with a final pass. Twigger Marlin, nothing stopping him in that situation. A scrum in the middle of the field is always a dangerous for any defending side. There was the little flick through, very cleverly done. And then Van Rensburg just expecting Twigger Marlin to go to the outside. But despite the attentions there of Ian McDonald right at the death, no opportunity for Transvaal. Well, a very good fight back by Auckland. It started with that pinpoint up and under by Grant Fox. And also a lovely little opportune dart into the back line there by Shane Howarth, who put Tuigamala away. Second highest scorer in test history, of course. Michael Liner has the honour. right into the sun and he likes it and so do the touch judges well the referee's whistle has gone for half time it was a very good fight back by Auckland to come back they were looking a little leg weary at 10 points to nil but showing their courage and their great pride and tradition the referee's whistle has gone as I said a goal and a penalty to that goal very important conversion by Grant Fox and we will join you for the second half We set for a battle royal in the second half, a goal apiece and just Van Rensburg's penalty separating these two wonderful sides as Henny LaRue begins this game, the second half. Big question mark now is will Auckland's legs hold out? Yeah, 
Ian McDonald. Pulled down by Dion Lotta. McDonald trying to rip it free. Ruse also in there. Pulling hands off the ball. LaRue. A test for Howarth. Tugan Marley is back in support. Good catch by Howarth. He's been pretty efficient in everything he's done. Well, he's a man, of course, who broke his neck in 1983 and has recovered very well. That's 10 years ago. And also last year was the top try scorer for Auckland with 16 tries. So he's obviously a, a try scoring factor in this team. And we saw how well he came in for that try of Tigamalas. Visa fed from Panastradum's touch. The barge at the advantage line by Yapi Mulder. Michael Jones was across in cover. Pino was quickly in there, Rue, LaRue, the skip to Van Rensburg up in the back line. Howarth just uh, making sure it would be Auckland's throw. Transvaal definitely in the latter part of the second half, tending to win more second phase ball. I think in that coupled with the ascendancy in the lineouts, you've laid a very firm platform for them if they can continue with that sort of success in the second half. Short, they've used Dowd at the front of the lineout extremely well. Nice run there by the little scrum half, new to Alicia, taken on by Michael Jones. Now the bigger men come up in support. Fox, all the time in the world to make the clearance. Don't often see that from Rensburg got Peter Hendricks on the inside. Tuga Mahler came across in defence, but the kick just coming off the side of Van Rensburg's boot. Fitzpatrick, the quick throw. Due to Alicia, gets a beautiful pass out to Fox. The skips to, to Clark. Well, the Transvaal players not going staying on their on feet. feet. Off your left foot, on your feet. Red on your feet, going down on the ball. Well, that was a good little dart by Clark. So, the second penalty attempt for Grant Fox. Kicked a superb conversion, and this to level the scores. Clark, of course, with a big drive through down the middle. Now, you see Francois Pinard there on his ground there, just uh, trying to play the ball. And Transvaal is coming in as they rightfully need to do from behind, but uh, penalty to Auckland. And this one for Fox is pretty straight, as you can see. On the left-hand side of your picture there, he's inside the Transvaal half. Shouldn't have too many problems with distance. He had a similar kick in the first half, which just shaved the right hand upright. Just look at that point scoring record, you and uh, He's uh, Transvaal and certainly going to need to guard against uh, errors in the second half. He's been in a pressure situation many times before. Hold your breath. And the touch judges flag just crept in the upright. But, of course, it's three points for Grant Fox and for Auckland, and the scores are level. He must have held his breath there for a moment as it started to swing away, but then seemed to straighten up a bit. Very well taken penalty. Brook makes the catch, feeds back to Fitzpatrick. To New Alicia. And that's a very good clearance by Grant Fox. We saw a little earlier where he missed his touch and that uh, something we were saying that he very, very rarely does. Stradom at four has been doing good work. Visa couldn't catch that time. Difficult ball for the little West Samoan scrum half. 
Carter takes up the scrum half position, works efficiently. Nice pass in from Fox to Igemala. He's still on his feet. Look how strong this man is. Good tackle by Uli Schmidt. Well worked and good skills by the Auckland forwards. Just waiting now. Tuna Lucia doesn't want to take it. Will they catch the transfer forwards offside? Trying to get a second drive going. The forwards doing well. Brown, Ole Brown in the thick of things. Then it's popped up to Carter. Now Fox has the chance to open it up. This is Stensness. He's an elusive runner. Mulder gets back for the tackle. Stensness holds it up for support to come. To New Alicia gets it again. The skip out to Howarth. Good tackle by Henny LaRue. Went forward out of Howarth. Cutter. Resultant penalty to Transvaal. Now when Van Rensburg looks up, you see he's just shield himself, his eyes from the sun. And it in fact couldn't be more into the sun than this. Well, we must apologize for that link break, but we're in the midst of Theo van Rensburg lining up a penalty attempt for Transvaal. It's still locked at 10 all. It came from a drive by the Transvaal forwards and the new Auckland players going offside. This is vital. And it's hit the upright. McDonald couldn't get it away. A little knock on there. It's going to be the advantage to Auckland. Good advantage played by the referee as Fox makes no mistake with a good clearance. So we still don't know who the champion province of the Southern Hemisphere is. Rue. LaRue went a little ahead of him. He did well to pull his hands out of the way. Yep, Bernard Ferry, who's very strong on his feet. Auckland would want to try and wrap this up. McDonald going in. Bali Swart lending a hand. He's number one. The three Aucklanders around the ball now it rolls loose to Rue. Did, did well to see that there was space there. Now Peter Hendricks. Good defence by Tuiga Mala as he saw Clark was coming across very quickly. Every time Tuiga Mala gets the ball, the Transvaal is in trouble. Sean Fitzpatrick, I think, just saying to the referee that uh, was quite a good decision. Still a little bit of a problem in the front rows. Northland realizing that Tuigamale is full of running. Van Rensburg in a bit of trouble. Look, Tuigamale is across very quickly. Now LaRue opening it up to Dirks, who couldn't get it away to Bernard Ferry. Well, it could have been dangerous for Auckland had Bernard Ferry been in possession there. But still, Auckland attack. to Alicia just going on the dark now it's just tenseless he's got an open line in front of him it's going to be under the uprights brilliantly worked try and Stensness loves it one of the most promising players in New Zealand and so do some of the people in the crowd Well, the ploy was for Fox running off camera there to go blindside. Then the little run across there. Now watch how the gap opens for Stensness. Believe me, he's got tremendous pace off the mark. And then, of course, the little sidestep on the inside. Just uh, ful fulfilling the promise that he's shown in New Zealand. And as a combination, him and Aroni Clark have uh, had an excellent game today with the few opportunities that they have had. Certainly looked full of running. And a very good ploy there, but uh, an excellent effort too by Nuto Alicia. And this is the conversion from Grant Fox right under the poles, a mere formality for him. Well, it was good pressure play by Auckland. They had driven Transvaal back down into their 22 by using the short side into Igamala. 
And little new to Alicia did some good running as the gap opened up. Watch how he darts away from the scrum and then Stenson comes through. There's acres of ground, a huge gap. Just the shake to the one side and Van Rensburg left for dead. Now Auckland again, their forwards seem to be gaining in confidence. It was again Stensness who drove Transvaal back. With the Auckland, the Auckland uh, tight forwards seem to be coming into the game now as well, and particularly utilising uh, Mark Carter as well, who operates as the open side flanker and is getting to the uh, point of breakdown a lot quicker than they did in the first half. Well, this altitude myth, maybe Auckland again to blow it. Visa. Jumping across. Number four. Chris Stokes. And Chris Stokes' punting has been very good today. Short line out by Transvaal, deep to Lotta. Carter got to the hands first. Carter doing, getting better and better and stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Knock on, scrum down red ball. Using Jackson to good effect as well. Lotta at the back now. Transvaal got a move going here. Lou just took a peep up. Well cleared up by Tunu Alicia. Taken on by Michael Jones. Thumping tackle by Barley Swart, the referee waiting for advantage. Okay, okay. Now Michael Jones and Barley's notes. Sean Fitzpatrick just uh, saying to Barley Swart, I don't think I particularly enjoyed that tackle on Michael Jones. I don't think he particularly enjoyed the tackle on himself as well because he was slung to the ground there by Barley Swart. But nothing, nothing serious to report. Go right five, go in five. Come on. Now Transvaal again to be under pressure as the time goes on. This is Thea von Rensburg gets it away to Dirks. Good tackle by Howarth, who's been solid as a rocket fullback. Picked up by Bernard Ferri for Transvaal. McDonald goes in and he gets the possession. Rue, LaRue and Pinar's in the back line and he gets through the middle and he's got Bali Swart on his inside in support and he couldn't find enough red and white jerseys around him. And a long pass out to Tia from Rensburg. Gulli Schmidt is on the outside for reach on the bar swing. Now it's Henny LaRue. Now it's Henny Schmidt. He's in for a second try. He was hovering on the left, hovering, 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 and he finally he got the ball. The transfer has managed to work it out to him. He positioned himself beautifully, and the crowd love it. Well, full credit for that initial thrust there by Francois Pinard. Then it was the little flip. Watch Pinard now on the inside, finding space. Not enough men except Barley Swart close to him. He couldn't pick up Yopi Mulder, who was at the backside of him. Mulder was the man who helped get it out. And then the long pass to Fernensburg. Watch how well the little inside pass to Bernard Free, who just has his jersey tugged. And then the thrust there by LaRue. Well, that was great effort there by the fly half in getting that pass out to Schmidt. And once again, full credit. Uli Schmidt always in the game. Well, Theo van Rensburg has had some pressure kicks in his life. He had to kick in the Curry Cup final to win the game for Transvaal. He had one in the dying seconds for South Africa in Toulouse. He kicked that one. He missed the one in the Curry Cup final and he's missed this. Well, it's been a battle royal. Just two points the difference. Just watch how well LaRue gets that pass of his after he was scragged there. And, and then Uli Schmidt, well, he needs no introduction to any try line. You saw there the terrific skills of Uli Schmidt. He really is a great all round footballer. Good play there by Hannes Stradom. Offside, Auckland. No, no, no. The ball's emerging, is going over. No ways. Despite Sean Fitzpatrick's protestations, the referee pretty firm. Oh, 
chance for right winger Chris Dirks. I tell you, it's a long time since I've seen a man kick a punt that sort of distance with so much ease. He really is a great timer of the ball and, uh, as we know, a very good all-round player as well. Panastrado made a terrific catch on the line-out and now it was uh, Bernard Ferry who couldn't hold on. Transvaal players mustn't panic. Auckland a lot of experience in these types of situations. Relief for the New Zealanders. Tunu Alicia getting it out to Howard now to Igamala. Always doing something with the ball. Very impressive. Theo van Rensburg gets past him. That time gets his hands through the tackle. Dion Lotta now. Peter Hendricks now the long one to Henry LaRue. LaRue saw that all those Aucklanders were up. Now the chase between Chris Dirks and Terry Wright with the ball wins. A good little touch there by Theo van Rensburg, the transvaal fullback. And LaRue saw that there were a lot of blue and white hoop jerseys up on defence. No point in running that ball. Well, the All Blacks played here and they ran into a 20.3 lead. But at the end of the game, it was three goals and two penalties to New Zealand and three goals and one penalty to South Africa. It's just a conversion, the difference now. Again, Dowd used at the front. Tunu Alicia does well to hold it up for some of the Auckland forwards to come round. Now Terry Wright in the scrum half position. Johan Roo goes in to try and grab it for Transvaal. Johan Roo liked it. Great roar from the crowd as the referee indicates that it's Transvaal's put in at the scrum. Auckland backs line very flat. Lotta at the back of the scrum. Roo. LaRue, now Yapi Molda now picks it up to Francois Pinar. Francois Pinar just corkscrewing his way through. Good counter to push by the Auckland players. Body Swat gets taken out unceremoniously. That was good defence by Auckland. Fox making no mistake. Well, the Auckland forwards there, Gavin, doing extremely well to rob Transvaal of the ball. Yes, it was almost a hopeless situation, and somehow the ball, uh, as Francois Pinot, was heavily dumped there by Brendan Jackson. I think the ball managed to squirt out on the Auckland side, and relief for them. An interesting seesawing situation now, and after Auckland's try, there seems to be a, a bit of revitalisation in the Transvaal camp once again. They're certainly getting plenty of ball, and just... Those odd errors in the back there. That's one of the men that's been getting it for them. Hunter Stratum. 16 minutes of the game to go. Carty is in there defending desperately. Down. Down. Auckland did well to prevent Transvaal getting that ball back. Transvaal have definitely had the ascendancy at the lineouts. But the double banking defence of Auckland very good. Tunu Alicia in a bit of trouble at the back of the scrum. You see Jackson going in quickly. Juan LaRue just uh, getting him in a bit of a headlock a la wrestling style. Quite right by the referee. Juan Ru was the man who stopped Tunu Alicia getting the ball out. Jones has come off the back of the scrum and is buttoning down the, the blind side. You can see him on the far side there. There's the man with the socks around his ankles. Rue, LaRue, then they have a move on the go. Now LaRue gets through the gap and he finds Yapi Mola on the inside. Can Yapi Mola find in and support? He tries to get it back to Johan Rue. I think it's gone forward. Still the chance for players drive. The referee is allowed to try. The last man up is the skipper, Francois Pinard. Congratulations from his fellow loose forwards. Well, we'll just have to look very closely. Did that ball go forward, Gavin? Well, this was a great 
uh, thrust through the midfield there. Watch how Leroux runs across the field. The ploy coming, he's so quick off the mark. And then Mulder, who's also got pace, he might have thought about going on the outside, decided to keep inside, and obviously there was plenty of shouting there from uh, his fellow players. Pinar, ever present at the point of breakdown, is the man with the final thrust. From behind the poles, we'll get a better picture of just how well Leroux got through there. Desperate tackle there from Grant Fox, who was guilty of not bringing his man down. Through it went. There's Pinar with the ball now in hand. Well, nothing stopping him. Well, Tier van Rensburg, who hasn't had a happy day, Doug. The ball rolled over. And oh, he just gets it over the upright. The touch judges in a little confusion. No, nope, the touch judges say it didn't go over. It went under the crossbar as he had started his run to make the conversion. The ball rolled over. Quick thinking by him, but he just rushed the drop a little too quickly. The touch judges, one said it was over and one said no, but it definitely wasn't over. So there's still only three difference. Now watch this as Jopi Mulder made the dash through. Then Pinar picked it up. It looked like that ball might have gone level and Pinar very, very strong. And we now see that Zinzan Brook is on the field. Transvaal come away with the ball. Howarth with no other alternative. So Zunzan Brook onto the field in place of Brandon Jackson. Jackson came limping off the field there just now, but obviously an adequate replacement in Zunzan Brook, himself an all black. Zinzan, a man who scored a try with quick thinking in the test match here at this field last year. Quickly in there with the Auckland forwards. Robin Brook just saying that isn't the penalty a little bit more infield. Mr. Fiat Berger, who's the number one rated referee in South Africa and I don't think there have been too many problems with him today good kick by Fox who's right up against the touchline and beautifully judged well, Zinzan will be the man with the big black bandage around his hamstring number 21 8, 3, 8, 5, 9 Jones makes a good catch. Tunu Alicia just delving in for it. Fox just a drop is necessary to level the score. Stensness in trouble. There's uh, Carter who is right up in there. Rue did well to get that ball away. LaRue just looking for respite for the Transvaalers. Which way will the bounce go? It favours Transvaal. Well, Henny LaRue, who's been criticised sometimes for his ability as a tactical kicker, has brought off some very good ones today. Great, great. He, like Van Rensburg, who in fact has had an awful day with his place kicking today, have put in a great deal of practice with their kicking. Exhaustion now starting to set in. It's now just heart, guts. The legs have got to hold out. Just waiting for the ball to come out. They must keep that going in from the they can't go in from the side of that mall. Fox. Dirks has got work here to do as Terry Wright comes up very quickly. Holds Dirks up in the tackle. What's the referee's decision going to be? Oh, well, that's the first application of the new law. Terry Wright was on to Chris Dirks very quickly. Transvaal unable to loosen it up. And so it's Transvaal's advantage. And I might say, Monsieur Marcel Martin, who is here today, and he's on the International Rugby Laws Board, just clarified that with the referee and myself before the game. He said it's any kick. So it's a grubber, a kick off, any form of kick. Even at 22. 
Now the scrum's moving, the scrum's not stationary. Just everybody, just give me a chance. Let's get down. Tight binding. Let's go straight. Well, we've had about 70 minutes of a little bit of trouble in the front row. Now Rue starting to use his boot tactically. Right with a difficult run. Kurt did well and he rode on Terry Rice's back. That was McDonald up very quickly. Penny LaRue, the fly half, went up as well. Tunu Alicia got a hand to it. Now it's taken on by Zinzan Brook, a thumping tackle by Barley Swart. And Tunu Alicia gets it nicely to Fox. Beautifully taken by Van Rensburg. Now a chance for him to make amends with the drop. Is it there? Is it there? Oh, and it hits the upright again. Would you believe it? Tunu Alicia back for it. The transfer players can't charge because Van Rensburg was right back. And this is interesting. Now the referee allowing the play to go on. Well, I can't believe that Tunu Alicia didn't dot that down because he just walked away. Was it uh, what was it, Howard? He just walked away and threw the ball forward. Well, Tunu Alicia was He's the man who actually picked the ball up there. And uh, there's the little throw, yeah, obviously he's... assuming that it's a 22. A kick to Howarth, he was charged by the Transvalers, found himself in a bit of trouble and chipped it out to touch. Well, that could have been an awful moment for Auckland. Can't believe that he didn't put pressure on that ball. Bali Swart pulled it in well and took the pressure off Johan Roo. Now Kurbis Visa held up by Fremont. Now Hannah Stratum goes in behind him, help from McDonald. Johan LaRue is also in there. And need to loosen this up. This is good players. Johan Stratum tries to belt forward. I think Auckland have buttoned it up. Penalty for lying on the ball. Johan <laughs> Stratum, very difficult really for him to release that ball. But the laws say you've got to let it go. Get out of the way. Even if, it, even if there is a ton line on top of you. I think he obviously tried to roll over and uh, with his back to the opposition try line but uh, was hindered in doing so and th there's the relief from Grant Fox. Well I think Gavin everybody a little relieved that Auckland came away with that because it really wouldn't have been that great because I don't, can't believe that the little scrum half would have just thrown the ball forward like that if he didn't feel he'd applied pressure on it. Well I, you know, I think the ball was stationary behind the try line and he did a put his hands on it and uh, that uh, in anyone's book is normally constitutes a, a dot down but uh, obviously some of the transfer players and some of the Auckland players felt otherwise including the referee good catch by Fremont then the ball coming out untidily Fremont went down in that mall this could be better Dion Lotta darting in there Brook gets him back now Fox now to Auckland having to open it up to Igamala couldn't find Howard Peter Hendricks is on quickly to him. Well, that is the sort of pressure that happens or things that happen under pressure when you start finding yourself 20 points to 17 down, six minutes to go on the official scoreboard clock and the players desperately trying to open up something. Those balls can tend to just go a little bit astray. Needs sure, firm handling. Transvaal having a board meeting as to where this ball is going in the line out. Unnecessary for them. Looking at each other. Zuri Schmidt waits to throw. Oh, good catch at the front of the line out there, uh, Brook. He got ahead of Kurbis Visa. Now Fox will want to take this quickly. It's not an awful lot of time. Well, his priority right now is to get down into the Transvaal 22, get his team down there, and Transvaal obviously have got to ensure that they don't start making mistakes now. We don't want to get into a drawn situation, which will result obviously in extra time. But uh, the Transvaalers would uh, will obviously be looking to try and keep it deep into Auckland territory. Good tap down to Robin Brook by Michael Jones, tackled by Johan Larue. This is good ball for Auckland. Michael Jones, a referee, in the thick of it. Tunu and Lucia gets it away to Fox. And Fox, look at the experience of that man. Is this going to be over? Wolf, he just, just shaved the upright with that one. What a great attempt. Terrific play by the Auckland forwards. And then that man, with all the experience, just saw the opening to draw the scores level. As Gavin was saying, if the, laws, if the scores are level, then it's 10 minutes each way. And if the scores are level after that, the trophy is shared. 
Bit of a low one by Henny LaRue, well taken by Fromont. Junior Lisha going over to try and grab it now. Rue gets. Rue sees he had a bit of room on the open side. It's went forward out of his hands. This is Michael Jones. Oh, and Michael Jones went into one of the Transvalers there, knees and all. Is it Fitzpatrick who came round with it, Gavin? Right. Well, it's interesting that uh, there's the touch judge talking to the referee as uh, one of the front pilots. Judge, let's watch this again as Fitzpatrick comes round. And then I don't think there was any dirty play there. It was on two. Well, Gavin, I don't think that was dirty play. He seemed to charge you into him. He didn't lift a boot into him, though. It was just one of those hip movements. And really, uh, I wouldn't have given a penalty there myself. No, I don't think so. I did, uh, in the heat of the moment there, uh, Ian MacDonald obviously took a knock on the head from that. But uh, he merely lifted his thigh into the man, which has been done by many a rugby player on many occasions. This is the kick by Dirks. He hasn't found his touch. Twigamala, he's going to have to open it up. Is he going to go try and go down the middle? Very strong man. Somebody needs to bring him down by his feet. Setting up the second phase. One of the last few opportunities for Auckland. Well, this is a penalty that's been given to them inside their half of the field. Deliberations maybe here by Grant Fox as to whether he's going to kick for Pulls. No, he's quickly up to kick for touch. And you saw again that Tui Gamala took four Transvalas to eventually stop him. Like a human tank. He took a bit of a knock. He's up to looking too bright. I think maybe just exhaustion. Crowd screaming encouragement to Transvaal. Francois Pinar looking exhausted. Deep to Jones. Pinar got the better of that touch and Rue did well. Now Rue has got to keep up. This is Henny LaRue. And the crowd from Transvaal's point of view love it. It was an awkward position for uh, Johan Roo to be in there, but he did well to get that ball back to, uh, to, to Henny LaRue. Short line out by Auckland. Taken down by Robin Brook, he's got a little bit of space. He's tackled by Bali Swart, who's tackled extremely well for a front ranker. Front rankers, of course, must do their work. This is Stensis. Great tackle by Henny LaRue, stopped him in his track. Carter was up there very quickly. Now Tunu Elisha getting it away to Stensness. Good tackle by Pinar. Now Michael Jones. Henry Johan Luru goes in with a tackle. Good second phase ball for Auckland. Fox will want to spread this wide to Igamala. Henny Luru goes low. You have to go low with him. Carter gets it away to Howers. Can Terry Wright get in? No. Soundly dumped. Terry Wright's a light man in the transfer cover defence. Got him. Johan Luru finding. Tiafan Lensberg and they scramble it away. Well, that was terrific play by Auckland to loosen up Terry Wright and good cover defence by the Transvalers. Well, an interesting situation because the, the earlier pass on this near side of the field was very definitely forward by uh, Stensness for Auckland. And then, of course, the final tackle there, that crunching tackle on the far side by Uli Schmidt, bringing the relief for Transvaal. Perhaps the last opportunity now for Auckland. Well, if Grant Fox gets this again, Dowd does well. Carter darts around the front of the lineup. Zinzan goes in. This must surely be a drop kick attempt. And Dion Lotta tries to get onto him and sliced it a bit. Another good attempt. From Rensburg must surely dot this down. Yes, he does. And the Transvalers will be in no hurry to restart the game. With zero minutes on the official scoreboard clock, and the crowd are on their feet. And I think it's one. 50,000 people less, a few Auckland supporters whistling. Now, Robin Brook goes up, a difficult one for his brother Zinzan, it went forward. Transvaal's hands go high, high in the air, the supporters come dashing onto the field, the Auckland players droop their heads in disappointment, some of them are down on the ground. 
The fans run on to congratulate their heroes. A terrific fight back, Gavin, by Auckland at the death there. Well, they showed a lot of character, I think, in, in getting back in the very basic and important phases of the game, being the line-outs and getting to the point of breakdown and then bridging the advantage line. They started to get that right, but I think at the end of the day, one of the things that was said by Transvaal captain Francois Pinar was that defence was going to be vital for them. And I think their first time tackling throughout this match was first class. And they certainly used the opportunities. The tactical kicking was outstanding. And there's uh, Sean Fitzpatrick, probably very disappointed. And down with Sean Fitzpatrick is David van der Sant. You blade in Sean Fitzpatrick, that was a desperately close one. Yeah, Derek Kaisan, uh, no excuses. Uh, I played well and, uh, and deserved the win. It looked like you were coming into the game early in the second half, more controlled, play your forwards, well, and then Transvaal came back. Yeah, definitely. We, you know, the first 30, 40 minutes, we were getting no ball at the lineouts. Uh, final part of the game, they cancelled out, out at the lineouts, and uh, you know, all credit to them, they played the game well and, uh, and, and played it to, you know, to the way they wanted to. That was a very important phase of your play, getting good possession from the lineouts, and Transvaal did extremely well today. Yeah, definitely. They shut us down there on the first, as I said, in the first 40, and, uh, and we, you know, it took us an age to get back in the game, and maybe if. Uh, Maybe we've had another 20 minutes, uh, we might have, might have pulled it off, but uh, who knows. I must ask you, the legs getting very towards the end, the altitude, any factor today? No excuses. Great, thank you very much okay. for coming to South Africa again, Sean. Great to be here. Thank you. You Bladen, and let's go back to our commentators, you Bladen and Gavin Cowley. Well, I must say that the Australasian captains have always been so sporting in defeat, and uh, no complaints, just saying that the altitude didn't get to them. The... Uh, Final tries coming forward, uh, transfer by Schmidt and Pinar. Schmidt getting one in the first half. Van Rensburg having an awful day with his kicking. His kicking really has been in such incredible form. The try by Tuigamala, then a lovely try by Stensness. And that man, Francois Pinar, who got the last and winning try for Transvaal, will be absolutely delighted. Well, a game, Gavin, in which I felt that the Transvaal forwards really through their line-out work laid the pattern and the foundation for the win. I think if you can, uh, certainly if you show, can show ascendancy there in uh, the line-outs, it does make a big difference. And we're down there with David van der Sant, our roving reporter. Thank you, Gavin Cowley, France of Pinar. We'll speak to you in English for the sake of all our viewers in New Zealand and England. That was desperately close. Incredible defence towards the end. Yes, uh, we actually lapsed in the middle of and they scored a try before the, the end of the first half, which brought them back in the match. Uh, I felt my guys played very well. Uh, it's a tight game as it goes in the final. Uh, we scored when we had the opportunities, and uh, it feels great. They were up 17-10, and you showed great character coming back, scoring two tries. Yeah, that was in the laps. Uh, we started off very well. We scored when we had to, but uh, it didn't go well in the half. But we managed to pick it up. Uh, I must congratulate my guys. Out of a lot of character, and uh, the Cubs, yeah. Absolutely, Francois. And then I want to ask you that uh, towards the end, they were coming at you. What were you telling your guys? Just stick in there, guys. We've got it. Tonight, celebrations in Joburg. For sure. Great. Thank you very much, Francois Pinard. Thank you. Well, Francois Pinard in this Australasian series, in the Super 10 Super Sports Series, he certainly has, uh, his English has improved a great deal. He's had a lot of practice with interviews, whatever, and just three points in it. I must say that finally it was a try that, that decided the game. And Gavin, just to go back to that point where Transvaal certainly, Auckland seemed to be battling in the lineouts and they just weren't able to set it up from there. Well, they used Robin Brook early in the match and they tended to get quite a bit there in real soccer fashion. The men are of Transvaal are thanking the crowd for the support that they've given in this Super 10 series. But uh, Robin Brook was a uh, man alone, I thought, uh, early on. And uh, after that, they, they didn't utilize the back of the line out as much as what we thought they would. And uh, they've got some big men there. And uh, uh, Transvaal certainly were pinpointing in their throwing in Uli Schmidt. And they used their options so well, I think, behind the set pieces. There was a lot of kicking, but the tactical kicking was always spot on by Henny LaRue and uh, those long punts by Chris Dirks. And then I think, on, besides uh, a couple of occasions when uh, there were some unforced errors on the part of Transvaal, they were fully deserving of their victory today. I think they did the, they did the basics well, uh, and that's, after all, the most important part of any game. There's Tr uh, Francois Pinar with the Transvaal mascot. A very jubilant crowd here at Ellis Park. Well, the trophy as yet has not been handed over, so we're just waiting for the dignitaries to come down from the President's suite. I'm sure that Louis Late will have tears in his eyes. 
but uh, we'll be waiting for them to come down to present this magnificent new trophy. Well, Auckland have been in this situation before where they played in cup finals. They've had such a wonderful record. Talking to Brian Williams when he came out with the West Samoan team, he was giving me a little bit of the background on Auckland. And who will forget the side they had in 1987 when New Zealand won the World Cup with the Wetton brothers and magnificent players in their side, captained by David Kirk. And remembering that Auckland don't have John Kerwin in this team. Well, great moment for Francois Pino. He's led the side with great success. Transvaal perhaps having a little bit easier of the draw in the, their Pool B as against Auckland's Pool A. They had a home game, two home games here. They had a game at Loftus Fairsfield. So three of their games were pretty easy. But finally, just the three points in it and the new champions of the Southern Hemisphere, Transvaal.